Hi everyone, this is Jessica in EdTech 531 and this is my final presentation lesson. My lesson centers around the concept of hunter-gatherers in prehistory and the transition into the agricultural revolution followed by the rise of city-states and civilizations. I designed a custom map for this lesson using World Painter, which was quite an experience because I'd never used that program before. Um, I decided I wanted two very distinct areas for this particular lesson arc since there's three phases. And right now we're going to go ahead and focus on classroom space number one. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is the bottom level of classroom space number one. I wanted to focus on management, um, which is why there are colored carpets. There are objective spaces on the wall uh, to remind students of what our focus is and to keep everyone organized. There are six groups in my class on a daily basis. And um, so I came up with the six colored maps, which emulates what we saw on some of the other lesson experiences previously in this particular class. My classroom is organized into six different class craft groups. So there are storage areas on either side of this classroom. So you can see behind me right now and over on to the left. So each chest is labeled with a different group name and groups can store various items in there between rounds of gameplay. Let's go ahead and head upstairs to the secondary classroom space. I'm calling this the observation deck. This is our area for debrief and reflection and whole group discussion. I teach 10 year olds, so I thought it would be a good place to sort of emulate regular classroom norms in terms of listening and speaking. Um, I went ahead and in front of this podium, I posted on signs the various expectations for um, discussions in class. And then this little podium gives me a nice place to be able to see everyone who's participating in the room. Now if we go back downstairs, I have a warning posted right over the door that says outside these doors you are in survival mode. So students need to be ready right from, from the moment they step outside. So let's go ahead and explore some of the world that I created. The main lesson idea is that students in the first phase would be experiencing life as a hunter-gatherer. So they have quite a large area to explore and many different obstacles to overcome, such as defending themselves against a variety of creatures, um, being able to effectively hunt and gather and interact together as a group. So there are some collaborative skills that they'll also need to be um, taking into play and then also just dealing with the environment and the various hazards therein and being able to survive. So all of that takes place in phase one. I think in my lesson plan I estimated that phase one gameplay would take somewhere between 45 and 90 minutes depending on how much of a rich experience you wanted to provide students. Um, but they would start with basically nothing so they would have to craft all of their weapons and develop some sort of systematic approach to hunting and to gathering. There would probably be some division of labor and um, then students would share out. In phase two and three, things get a little bit more complex. Students make the shift from uh, hunting and gathering to permanent settlement. So with that, they come upon the secondary classroom area, which is built around a river. It's predominantly flat land, so students have um, space to be able to start constructing their irrigation systems and to gather seeds to be able to begin sustainable agriculture. So this is a, a shift in the game that is supposed to emulate the real life agricultural revolution. Phase three is all about building permanent settlements. And again, there are these wide open spaces over here by where their agriculture will be developed so that students can develop city-states. 
Uh, for this project, I developed a really detailed lesson plan. It was important to me that the lesson plan is replicable because my district has other teachers who are also using Minecraft, and I want to make sure that I'm able to share what I create. I have detailed instructor guides with timelines, notes, contingency plans. All the student materials have been developed, including the customized map, which you see here in World Painter. And then I also came up with a student workbook. The first task in the workbook is a Minecraft survey to help me make sure that each group has somewhat of a Minecraft expert in it. And then for each phase, there are different tasks outlined. So different tasks students have to do and then different reflective questions to make sure that we're meeting the standards and making it a rich learning experience. There's a final project. And um, in addition to developing the assessment task, I came up with a rubric so that students would be able to self-assess their work. And then I would be able to use the same rubric to return feedback to them. Thank you for watching my virtual lesson for EdTech 531.